DragonCon, and welcome. I'm Dr. Scott Jordan, aka Zombie Scotty, cognitive psychologist philosopher from Illinois State University. For just over a year now, my friends and I have had the great honor of organizing a series of convention panels we call Wakanda Forever, The Psychology of Black Panther. In collaboration with Mr. Jarvis Sheffield, director of DragonCon's diversity in speculative fiction and literature track, We've gathered here today to pay tribute and celebrate the life of Chadwick Boseman and the larger than life reality he brought to the character of Black Panther. To begin our tribute, I have asked Mr. Daniel June Kim, spiritualist and social justice activist, to say a few words. Uh, yes, hi everyone. So I'm sort of doing this on the cuff, so if it's not entirely as cohesive as I'd like it to be, I apologize in advance. Um, the other disclaimer is that this is just one of many, many ways to kind of begin approaching um, this topic. So if it doesn't feel true to anyone out there, obviously just ignore it or disregard it, find your own way. It's, it's one suggestion um, that I'm using personally, actually, um, during what for me is probably one of the most difficult years of my life, no, the most difficult year, just on a personal level alone. But then that's now we have the backdrop of all the stuff that's been going on societally. Um, so I, you know, um, as true to my pen name, the pop mythologist, I like to draw a lot from mythology for my coping and, um, you know, um, just kind of meeting the challenges of life. So I kind of sort of would like to invite everyone to imagine themselves um, as a young, innocent prince of sorts figuratively, metaphorically, or literally, running through a forest feeling free and innocent. And suddenly you receive urgent word from your elders uh, that your father has suddenly died. And obviously there's great shock. Um, shock partly because of the abruptness and suddenness of it and be because you never thought, you never imagined this towering figure in your life could just suddenly disappear like that. Um, and, 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 I, and I raise this, I evoke this symbol because I feel like one of the reasons why the passing, the very sudden passing of Chadwick Boseman has been so shocking for people. Again, it's partly because of the abruptness of it, the suddenness. We had no idea he was fighting cancer, for instance. And B, um, yes, this was a gifted artist who had so much to offer the world, but for a lot of us, I mean, we didn't know him personally, right? So why these intense feelings? And I think that has to do a lot with what he represented symbolically, what he kind of, what he was a symbol of for many people. And that could be different things, obviously, again. But um, in the midst of everything going on this year, to have this figure, this symbol, so abruptly and shockingly taken away uh, is for many people nothing short of traumatic. And so if you look at 
mythical stories and journeys in general, but particularly um, a superhero origin story, such as the Black Panthers. They often start with uh, a very traumatic event, which kind of rips away the previous world or life, the innocence of that hero. Um, and it's extraordinarily difficult, but it provides an opportunity of sorts for change. Um, in fact, sometimes I think there's nothing short of crisis or trauma that can kind of um, be the catalyst for positive change. And because pain is a, is a strong motivator. So this will make more sense, I think, when I kind of finish it later at the end, towards the end, um, as Scott has asked me to do. But just for starters, I would like to kind of ask everyone to think of in what ways were you before this year, before COVID, before the civil unrest, before the passing of Chadwick Boseman, innocent in certain ways, regardless of your age or experience, you know, where you are in life. We're, nobody knows everything about everything. We're all innocent, aka ignorant in some ways. And in what ways has this year, this year as a whole, or Chadwick Boseman's passing in particular, has kind of just shattered that innocence? Um, so that's certainly how I feel in certain ways. And just kind of, I invite you to just sort of pause at, at any point, like, I don't know, after this video, uh, and just take a moment to reflect, what have you lost? What kind of innocence have you lost? And then I'll sort of bring this kind of back full circle at the very end and um, invite people to do something with that, you know, that knowledge. So, I, you know, <laughs> That's a, sort of my semi-ritualistic opening of sorts. Mm. And then I'll, pa I'll, I'll pass this on to everyone else and what they would like to say. Well, thank you so much, Daniel. I uh, appreciate you bringing that to our tribute and celebration. As I said earlier, I'm Scott Jordan, a zombie Scotty cognitive scientist, philosopher from Illinois State University. Unfortunately, our dear friend, Dr. Vanessa Hintz was not able to join us for today's tribute panel. Why? because she's currently hosting a Facebook discussion on social justice, because that's what she does. So panelists, please tell the viewers who you are, say a little something about yourself, and tell us what does the life of Chadwick Boseman, Black Panther mean to you? And we'll start with the one, the only, Mr. Alex Simmons. <laughs> Greetings, everyone. My name is uh, Alex Simmons. I'm a freelance writer. I'm also a teaching artist. I'm also the creator uh, as a writer of the uh, comic book graphic novel character uh, Blackjack, uh, an African-American soldier of fortune, 1930s, and that will tie in in a little bit to uh, Chadwick and Black Panther. I'm also the creator of a, a family and children's event called the uh, Kids Comic Con, which is a, this year was in its 14th year, uh, somewhat differently than normal, and I will explain why that also ties into what Danny was saying about you know, innocence. Um, I've written a number of books in comics and children's uh, theater and, and uh, uh, children's uh, novels and things, and I've also written plays. And as an African-American male growing up in the United States um, and starting my life in the 50s, that's, you know, that's why the, uh, the hair here is gray, um, the image of strong, heroic black characters, male or female, were not present. Uh, we were domestics, we were porters, we were excluded entirely from the present day, the past, except slavery, and absolutely not in the future anywhere. And so my growing up years, I had heroes, I watched television, I read books, I read comics and all that, but all of my heroes were white. And it wasn't until the 60s that that started to change, and one of those changes was the Black Panther. Um, how it affected me then is a longer story. Uh, it, I'll just say it was amazing to see him pop up in uh, the Fantastic Four and then eventually over time to wind up in his own book and to have it set in Africa, which prior to that, the images we usually had of Africa included spears, thatched huts, uh, incoherent conversations, and the fact that we were born and raised in Africa, we were afraid of everything. So, um, this was, this, was, this was empowering, this was amazing, and the fact that Wakanda was this super scientific world, it was, to me, a futuristic Camelot for black folks. Uh, years go by, and one of my dearest friends, uh, Don McGregor, 
uh, wrote one of the most powerful storylines for that character at that time, which the movie was uh, later based on. And even that, bringing real life to those characters, they were now not just superheroes or stereotypical background support characters, but there was intrigue, there was love, there was romance, there was hatred, there was envy, there was duplicity, there was all those things that all human beings go through, whether you're black or white or any other you know, uh, culture or denomination. And so we were suddenly part of the universe. We were just human beings. And when the movie finally came out, uh, it struck me in so many ways. One of them was I got to see it with my kids who are full grown adults now, but nevertheless, they got to see that and I got to see it with them and their friends. And that was a huge bonding, family, wonderful, enjoyable experience. Um, I also got to see the world react to it, to a, a character that five years ago, they couldn't have gotten done. And I know because part of the things that were happening those five years was watching other black characters trying to get their place in the sun. And so this was amazing. The fact that the film was so successful and so well embraced was empowering and uh, instilled pride in so many people. And I love watching kids who were not black running around trying to be this hero because that's what he was. He was a hero. And one of the reasons it works so well on film is because of the cast. The people that were chosen to represent those imaginary fictionalized characters. Because I got the feeling that every single person involved in that felt responsible for bringing their A game, for making it real and alive and vibrant and the most powerful thing they could do. Maybe it was gonna be the only chance we got. Whatever the thought was, they brought it. And Chadwick, he not only embodied this young prince slash king, he not only embodied that in some of the earlier films with the Avengers and you know, Endgame and all that, but he was vulnerable. T'Challa was vulnerable. T'Challa was human. T'Challa was trying to figure things out. Where do I fit in? Where do my beliefs fit in? Where, what did my father do? What did my family do? What works and what doesn't work? Who am I supposed to be? And when I get beat down, what do I do with that? Who do I become? Am I no longer of any value? And he brought all of that genuine honesty to his performance. And I know, even though I don't know the man personally, and unfortunately will never have that opportunity, I know what kind of human being he must have been because of some of the interviews and statements and things were made about, but in particular watching him in an interview when he was trying to talk about these two young boys who were dying of cancer, who were communicating with him while he was in production. And when he realized that they weren't going to make it, but that they were trying to hold on for that movie. And he, he broke down in, in the interview and two of the cast members, you know, just put their hand on his shoulder, on his leg, just to give him support, just to let him know we're here, we hear you, take your time, be real, let it happen. Let the world see how you feel. Yeah. That's who he was. And that's what he brought to his work. That's what he brought to his life. And I think when you take that genuine human being and you put him and his talent into that character at this particular moment in history and time and where society is and with the divisity of, of, of certain individuals and organizations trying to just blow us apart, when you put him up there and it works and it unifies and it empowers and it brings love and amazement. And as I said, kids didn't matter what they were. They wanted to be him. When you put that out there, it says that, you know, the world may suck at the moment, but we ain't dead yet. Mm. We have possibilities. There are heroes. Mm. There are good spirits. There are angels. There are decent human beings in this planet. And we got to just stand up and pick up the torch when they drop and keep carrying it. And that's what I got out of all of that. That's fantastic. Thank you so much. Our next speaker, Mr. Victor Dandridge Jr. Hello, I'm Victor Dandridge, uh, self-publishing comic book creator, uh, lovingly called the hardest working man in comics. Um, the impact of Chadwick Boseman. Um, I've often said in my career that uh, being a black creator is what I am, not who I am. And it is not always the voice that I aim 
important to speak with, um, despite the fact that visually speaking, there is nothing about me that would suggest that it isn't uh, what I am. Um, Chadwick is almost an embodiment of all the things that, that I couldn't be. Um, if you look at the iconography of his work, uh, he speaks for the culture. He's of the culture and speaks for the culture in so many different ways that it's, it's, it's inspiring for sure, um, daunting without question. Um, but at the same time, so he did it so effortlessly um, to take figures from history, whether he physically looked like them or not, brought them to light in a way that generations past um, beyond their day could look upon these figures and understand, could represent, you know, or that, that figure could actually represent something um, beyond just a name in history. It could be a person that they understood. They understood the plights, the struggles. If you go back to 42, um, maybe you're not a, a baseball fan. Maybe you never really understood what Jackie Robinson went through, but his portrayal brought that truth to the, to the forefront. Um, when you go to, you know, get on up, you know, James Brown might be somebody that you've heard of, but you don't really know anything about. But here is this portrayal that my children who are growing up in a world without James Brown um, would see an understanding of the man beyond the music. Um, his, his presentation for Black iconography is unmatched. I don't think there's a single person that has done so much to represent Black culture in film from every angle, from the real life figures to the mythological figures. I mean, he's the only African American actor that's that's a god in Gods of Egypt. Like he's the only one and he's the god of wisdom. There's something to that. To the fictional of Black Panther, he's showing the full range spectrum of what blackness can be. And it's beautiful. He he brought us together in that sense of both not only conjoining, you know, black, white, brown, whatever, but the past, the present, and the future. It's represented in him. And to lose him in this 2020 day and age, there is a sense of hope that, that we did you know, lose a bit. But at the same time, if you look underneath the, the pain and the, the sorrow that you might feel of not having him, there is that kernel of something that, that will never be extinguished. And it is the opportunity for advancement, for moving forward in the light of what he's brought to us. Our understanding of history, our understanding of togetherness, um, Obviously, Black Panther brought all of us together as a conversation piece. And we're talking, you know, lay persons. I don't have a degree. I'm sitting here talking with doctors. You know, I, I never worked for Marvel or DC. Alex, definitely huge. You know, the spirituality aspect is, is a beautiful thing. I don't even know if I identify spiritually as anything, but I, I love what Daniel said. It brought us together. And that is indicative of who this man was. And the last thing I'll say is that uh, the one thing that I really hope that all of us get out of this is the hidden strength that Chadwick obviously had within him to have dealt with this condition for so long and not let it slip, not let it show, not let a performance falter. He was still our king at his weakest point. And he held that, that title with every sense of dignity and gusto warranting the position. Thank you. Very well said. Thank you. Although she wasn't able to join us for the recording of our celebration, she was able to send us this clip. Ladies and gentlemen, our dear friend, Dr. Vanessa Hintz. Hi, everybody at Dragon Con. Um, this is Dr. Vanessa Hintz, AKA Doc V, the geek. Um, I am a licensed clinical psychologist in the Milwaukee area. I'm also a professor of psychology at Alverno College and a diversity consultant. Um, professional geek, obviously. Um, so shout out to the Wakanda for All crew. I'm so sorry that I can't be there with you all um, to take take part in this sort of tribute live. Um, and I'm just gonna be honest with everybody. I'm, I'm just not ready to do so. Um, you know, when Scott pitched the idea of us doing a memorial, um, I emotionally, I'm just not there. Um, and so I, I thought it would be beneficial to share that with everyone um, because maybe some of you out there are feeling the same way, um, especially 2020 has been just the worst, um, I think, for everyone, um, but especially for Black folks. I mean, 
when I got the news of Chadwick's passing, I that was that was what I I put on my social media. Like, how much more do Black people have to take in 2020? We lost Kobe. There's a pandemic that's disproportionately affecting our communities. We are continually being brutalized by police. You know, like, what else do we have to do? And like, what what else do we have to deal with? You know, and so. Um, I told Scott, with all due respect, like emotionally, I, I'm just not ready. Um, I'm a therapist and I'm, I'm one that's like, yes, all the emotions, let's, let's deal with them. Um, but I think for me, again, with everything going on in 2020, I just had to sit this one out because I think that, you know, it's all been very emotional. And I think with Chadwick's passing, it hurts even more when you lose one of the good ones, you know? Um, it was the same way I felt about Kobe. When Kobe died, you know, I grew up watching Kobe. Um, Kobe is the reason I love basketball, that I love sports. And losing him, he was just larger than life. And I think it's the same way with Chadwick. You know, he portrayed so many influential Black characters. Um, and Black Panther being one that, you know, thrust him into the spotlight of not just Black folks, but of everyone. And for him to be able to do that and to be able to bring so much joy to so many people while he was dealing with this terminal illness is nothing short of amazing. And so I just want to thank Chadwick for doing what he did with such grace um, and for being the best Black Panther we could have asked for. So that's my message to Chadwick, Wakanda forever. Love from all of us, Vanessa. Thanks so much for sending that clip. Now back to the guys and Dr. Stanford Carpenter. Hello, my name is Stanford Carpenter. I am a cultural anthropologist um, I'm also a um, former archaeologist, I'm a comic scholar, um, and sometime comic creator. Um, yeah, um, one of the things that, um, that, that strikes me about this moment, it, it actually takes me back to when I first started, um, when, I was first, when I first became even inspired to, to walk the path that I'm, that I've that I've walked on from archaeology through the through the cultural anthropology to going around and interviewing comic creators, it's it's been my fascination with stories. Um, you know, it's it's a fascination that, that that runs so deep even to my cartoon alter ego brother story. Um, it's a fascination with with um, and, and it started with 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 just just something I wrote in a notebook decades ago about um, about stories to lean on right that sometimes that's all we have to get us through the night um it it takes me back to it takes me back to um back to high school you know where we had to run up this hill that no one could make it up and and one of one of the one of the guys just started telling the story of all the people who we ran past on the way to get up the hill the last time and we even ran by some some guy holding on to some tablets and some bush on fire right um mm -hmm. we all knew what that meant um um, and, um, you know, and, and about how that was what got me up the hill. Um, and that, that takes me to, to Black Panther, right? You know, what does Black Panther mean? I mean, and I'm not sure so much about what Black Panther means, but it's, it's, it's these stories that we, that, that we can lean on, these stories that can help us get through the night, right? Help us see the next dawn. Um, you know, Black Panther, I mean, yes, he's, it's, he, he's, he's part of a story, um, that has meant so much to so many African Americans. I mean, this phrase, I mean, this phrase I hear over and over again, he's our king, right? He's our king. We say he's our king while we sit in a democracy, a democracy formed out of like, out of, out of like trying to move away from a king, right? Um, and then, and then when you start looking at the story and, and, 
you know, like I said, my fascination, right? Why archaeology? Well, I'm, I'm fascinated by the things that hold on to stories. I'm fascinated with the way stories become um, become embedded in artifacts, you know, and in, in this case, an artifact with, you know, paper, <laughs> floppies, a comics, right? A comic book, a movie, right? I'm fascinated by the people who tell the stories. That's who I want to talk to. Um, but this story, right? This story was, was revolutionary in its time, but it was a story that was, that was created by, by two, two white guys of Jewish, Jewish descent in New York, right? Um, and, and the power of the story is not where it starts, it's how it moves. It's how it goes from person to person. It's how it touches each of our lives, right? You know, when we, when we lean on that story, we take it in and then we become a part of its retelling. You know, it could be, it could be in the form of actually being asked to, to play the role or to, or, to, um, or to pen the story, right? Or it could be just, hey, have you heard of this guy, Black Panther, right? Um, and I, I've had the I, I've had the the fortune of, of of talking to one of the men who was involved in creating Black Panther, and and it was it was it was a great conversation. And and what struck me was um, and, and what, what sticks with me is in the end, you know, he was chastising me a little bit because um, it came up that um, that I was talking to him while staying late at the office, and I was on baby watch because my daughter was due any day, and he was like, he's like, you know, you got to remember that like like these are just stories you know you got to get home to her right um and and it and it strikes me even more because because it was that moment of pointing out the importance of that human touch right you know now we're here to memorialize a man not a story you know um we're here to talk about a man not a story but but why this man, right? You know, why this man? And, and, and I keep coming back to, to this idea, you know, that, that stories are the things that get us through the night. You know, this is, this is, this is the man who, a man who picked up this story. And, and he was part of a retelling of this story that, that has gotten so many people through the night. And that's, that's where I'm at, right? You know, um, as, as I'm surrounded by people who, who are talking about what he meant. And, and, and part of me realizes at, down in my core that they're really not talking so much about what he meant, but the story he was a part of and what that story meant and how that story, you know, helped them get through, gave them something to lean on. You know, um, you know, did something as simple as got them excited and made them smile. But, you know, as simple as a smile is, it's also a little miracle. Mm. Um, you know, it's, it, it, is, it is a way of communicating feeling, but it's also a way of uplifting the people around us. It's the, it's, it's the difference between survival and the desire to survive and the ability to survive and, the, and, and all of that and not right in 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 certain key moments um so yeah what's what struck what strikes me and where i'm stuck right now to be honest is is in that tension right between between chadwick boseman as the man who quite frankly i don't know right i know the stories that he's told and those stories are incredibly meaningful and um, I've never met him personally, you know, and it takes me back to being, to being chastised for being so caught up in finding out about the story that I needed to get home. Right. You know, I, I am so sorry for, for the people who knew the man who, for whom this experience is not just about how it affects the story in relationship to them, but, but the man, right? Um, and in that way, I, it, it makes me feel like my talking even now is, 
is um, falls short. Um, and I think that that's what we're all left to grapple with, right? Is how do you, how do you truly honor the man who you don't really know, who's told the story or who's, who has acted out, who's been a part of the story that has gotten you through the night? That's fantastic, Stanford. Thank you so much. And now I'd like to read a testimonial sent in by Mr. William Gould of Seattle, Washington. Subject line, rest in power and peace, Chadwick Boseman, you will not be forgotten. Chadwick Boseman made a tremendous impact in his all too brief and brilliant life. As much as I enjoyed his amazing role of a lifetime as Chala, the Black Panther, I won't be able to fully appreciate how important this representation and the celebration of the dream of Africa and the continent's descendants are. He did it all while battling stage three colon cancer, including visiting children in cancer wards. Once he found out from the parents of the two boys he had just yet that they were trying to stay alive long enough to see Black Panther, illustrating in the starkest terms how important his role in its representation was. His portrayal was vivid and illuminating and globally appealing. His story wasn't my story, but I wanted to experience it because it wasn't my story. Bozeman and the cast and crew brought Wakanda to life for this generation and generations to come. Wakanda forever, Wakanda for all, William Gould. And now for our next speaker, Dr. Eric Wesselman. Y'all are hard acts to follow. <laughs> um, you said so many of the things that I'm, I'm thinking about, and I will do my best to, to, to add. Um, so I'm uh, Eric Wesselman. I'm a social psychologist at Illinois State University, professional nerd. Uh, love to talk about all these things together. Um, what I continue to perseverate on is so I, I, I study social inclusion and exclusion. That's uh, the, the sort of theoretical perspective that I take on most things. Um, and I'm also interested in research on, on grief. That's one of the directions I'm starting to go. Um, trying to tie those things together is relevant to what everybody is saying here. Um, themes of belonging and meaning, right? So in grief research, for example, um, a lot of work talks about how part of the trauma of grief is that it, it shatters the meaning that we've created, the stories, if you will. Um, uh, or as, as Daniel said earlier, you know, the, the sort of innocence, you know. Uh, and, and so that is part of it. Um, but we all, part of grief is also losing a connection to someone else, right? Now, and, and the pain that comes from that, diminishment of our feeling of, of belonging, of, of intimacy. And as many of you have all pointed out, and I'm too, none of us have met Mr. Bozeman, but um, when we connect with a, a, a person, uh, we become a fan of, of an actor, of a character, story, all of that, we do also connect with them at some level. Um, and so, and the more important that actor, the, the, the portrayal is to us, the, the sort of more intimate that connection is. And, and we know from research on interpersonal relationships that when we connect with someone, either directly in an interpersonal relationship or what is sometimes called parasocially with a celebrity, um, we bring that person and that perceived relationship into our self-concept. So when someone who we connect with so strongly to our own stories, when we lose that person, it also hurts the way we think. Of, I mean, it's sort of, we, we can't take this, this belonging and this meaning, they get tied together inexorably. And so 
we have a wound, how do we deal with it? Right. And interpersonally, culturally, interpersonally among the people that we, you know, so many of you mentioned seeing this film or any of these films with friends of yours, with family, right? That has become part of your story. And and, and how do we come to grips with with that? Um, I don't know, right? I mean, that's, and then that, that's sort of the, where I'm at right now is trying to really just understand the magnitude of that. Um, and I think the best way we can do it is what we're doing now, exactly. right? And now it is my distinct pleasure to welcome the women of Sister Speak Productions. I am Sister Kay and um, Sister Speak Podcast, we're everywhere. And I think when I think of Chadwick Boseman and Black Panther in particular, I kind of go back to my thought process or the excitement that I had with the movie coming out, Black Panther. I have seen Chadwick in other movies, but this one in particular struck me and I've been trying to think of why did it resonate so much with me. I am not totally into the universe although I do enjoy the movies, but I don't get into all of the mythos and all of the past and I don't read the comics, but this one in particular, I think hit at a a time where we needed to see ourselves on screen and we needed to have some kind of um, validation in that, what we already know about ourselves as people of color. We already know we're fantastic, we're awesome, we're smart we are loyal, we are, we love fiercely, we know all of this, but I don't think it's always um, represented or validated that others know this about us. We're always put in a certain stereotypical light, especially in entertainment, which is how our podcast started. Mm. And so this particular movie, I was super excited to go see. And then when I was in the theater watching it, I was just a little kid in awe with my mouth hanging open, like, yes, yes, we're in right. Wakanda. We're in, we are, they're the most technologically advanced civilization. And then he is a hero. A, uh, and everyone around him is a hero, honestly. Mm-hmm. And going down to the warriors, the women that were in charge of being the protectors, which is true in real life too. (laughs) I mean, just every little piece of it just made sense and resonated a lot with me. And it made me excited to see the reception that it had around Mm. the world. So it wasn't just me understanding and knowing what we are worth as people, Mm. everyone else was seeing that. And even though it was a movie, for, made for entertainment and for money, let's be real. Mm-hmm. The fact that it was a predominantly black cast and it wasn't called a black movie, it was in mm-hmm. the Marvel Universe. Right. It was a major block motion picture made by a major studio. I mean, all of that, Just you could just list out all of those criteria. Exactly. It just, all of it just hit home and just made me feel I still probably can't even articulate it well. Mm. Just a certain kind of way of proud, yeah. um, mm-hmm. excited. And then when you add in all of the people that were part of it, that made it what it was, that represented this King T'Challa, who re- Chadwick, who represented him. And, and that character was full of humility and grace and strength and everything that, you, that we know Black men can be, mm. but are very rarely portrayed to be. Mm. Um, it just brought it on home. So hearing of um, his death really, and someone again, I haven't ever met, didn't know, except from seeing on movies, but it did make me feel really sad. And then as the facts started to come out and what he was battling, but he worked through all of that for so many years, that's the kind of quiet strength, Mm. um, humility Mm. that I know of that just was personified in a real human person, not this character. And so it just kind of just brought all of that thought process back from my thoughts of the movie to mm-hmm. the actual person. And it just made me respect him mm-hmm. and um, be sad for his family even more mm-hmm. knowing that about him. So that's mm-hmm. kind of my thought on Black Panther, what it meant to me and Chadwick himself and knowing what he has gone through and he didn't, as so many people do post it online and get mm. and four years ago when he was diagnosed he didn't 
want that to be what people thought of him or ask him for four years or, you know, right. all of the things that we see other people mm-hmm. doing, that didn't happen. Mm. That's fantastic. It just makes yeah. me respect him so much more. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So much more. Mm-hmm. I am Sister LM, and to piggyback off of Sister K, um, Sister Speak was started because it needed to be representation and positive representation in the community. So I remember the excitement when Black Panther came out. I'm not a comic person. I'm not even into superhero movies and everything, but just, I literally like planned my outfit. I took (laughs) off of work and I'm like, this is like a big deal. And I go to the theater and it's just, everyone looks so good and we're all taking pictures like in the theater watching black panther it was definitely like you're just watching a movie with your whole family Mm -hmm. and just for even all the madness that's going on in the world but for everyone to come together to enjoy a beautiful beautiful piece of work even if it's fiction it was just a wonderful feeling and great to be a part of and so much there's so many people in the world that you never know what someone is going through. Mm -hmm. So for him to have worked on, for Chadwick to have worked on Black Panther, done other projects and persevered through his pain and his personal Mm -hmm. struggles is a testament to the man that he really was. Mm -hmm. And so many of us do the same thing. You really never know what the other person next to you is going through. So I'm glad he didn't, let that overtake him and let mm-hmm. that go away from what he gave us mm-hmm. the world so coming th- like hearing the news of course of course it was shocked that was really really sad but i know sometimes on social media people say oh but you never knew him you never met him mm-hmm. and it's really not about that it's respecting mm-hmm. his work respecting what he gave us as a black community mm-hmm. and for comic fans and then also, he just, he inspired us. He mm-hmm. in, still inspired us. Exactly. Yeah. Well, that's fantastic. Beautifully said. Uh, thanks, both of you, very much. Thank you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And shall we? Wakanda, Wakanda forever. forever. And now, our next speaker, Dr. Travis Langley. I've got all kinds of notes here along the way, and Eric made sure to use up some of the psychology I was going to talk about. <laughs> I am Dr. Travis Langley. I feel silly saying doctor when most of the room here has doctorates, but I'm in the habit of doing that at conventions. I am Travis Langley, Distinguished Professor of Psychology at Henderson State University in Southern Arkansas. I'm best known as the author of the book, Batman and Psychology, A Dark and Stormy Night, and the editor and lead writer on a dozen other books, uh, most relevant to this one, uh, Black Panther Psychology, Hidden Kingdoms, and the majority of people on this panel uh, contributed to it one way or another. You know, that Simmons' name appears next to mine as my co-editor, for which I'm very grateful. Um, I am... I'm fascinated with heroes, uh, real life heroes and fictional heroes. And we keep talking about Black Panther. Obviously there are plenty of other roles where Bozeman did amazing work. Uh, Black Panther is the one that made him a different level of celebrity, obviously. That's one reason we're talking about it. But there's also this, this complicated, with him you've got this dual parasocial relationship. When uh, Eric used that word, referring to a relationship that's basically one-sided like with a fictional character you really admire or have such strong feelings for a celebrity or a well-known person it it could even be somebody in your environment that you don't really know but there are reasons that you have for admiring them and it matters it's a very real part of your life and with Bozeman it's both uh, Chadwick Bozeman as a person and especially this particular character he's embodied plenty of other heroes but this one Black Panther is is the one where he, so he hits us in, in multiple ways and meaning to us and meaning to people at all kinds of different points in life. I especially feel for the children. 
the, the, the ones who parents have had to have some conversations about death with him and to really lay out that this is not the character of Black Panther who died. Uh, I, I remember when one of my nephews went through something like that. Uh, me, I'm kind of fortunate that my childhood heroes waited until I knew them and died in the last five years. Uh, one of them this year and had a tribute to him. And these things that mean so much to so many people and that word heroism. Chadwick Boseman had an interesting life and he related so strongly to people. Uh, he said, you, you see him in interviews, you see him visiting kids at hospitals. And he did a whole lot more of that than was ever reported. And there's something heroic about him as a person. So he brought those qualities of himself he wasn't just pretending to be a good person when he's playing Black Panther, though he might be the first to say, oh, there's nothing heroic about me. Um, but that's common with the people that we actually see as heroes, that they don't see themselves that way. But people looked up to him as a person and the character that he embodied so well. He, he brought interesting things to the character. He understood the kind of hero that it was needed, even more so than some of those studio executives putting that film together, like how he had to really make the case about that accent. A number of the articles about his death include you know, how he said, it's like, no, not the kind of, I don't want to do a Central European accent or, or British or sound American. It's very important in Black Panther is that this, the country Wakanda was never colonized was never subjected to the kind of British influence. It's, it's part of what people admire. It's like, what if there were this country where people had been able to reach their potential because of not having that, that Western influence, that European and American influence? And, and both that simple decision, and when he was playing the part for his first appearance in Civil War, that then carried over into everything and how they're playing all of Wakanda, every actor in there had to have something related to the accent he did or make a decision about what African or other influence was affecting how they played their part. So it wasn't just him playing the one role. His portrayal carried over into everybody's portrayal. And that is an amazing thing. As he helped this, this, this character stand out boldly and regally with strength and great humanity mm. and and he's a healthy hero even for all the problems of course he's got things that weigh on him he's had some very big things happen in his life but you know we know from his first appearance in civil war that he's the one who has the really strong growth and arc there at the end while these other guys are beating each other up and it's a very powerful moment and it was a wonderful introduction to all kinds of people out there who didn't know this character when i saw the film black panther there was this old African-American woman sitting next to me. And the, the place was packed because I saw it the first night. And there's this old African-American woman sitting next to me. And it's very nice. She asked if I wanted candy. And, <laughs> and, and it was just, it was interesting to me seeing, just, she was just giddy with delight over that film. And, and I, I enjoyed her delight. It, it was what that meant to, to many people. Ken Lashley, a comic book artist we know, who, who actually, he's one of several people we interviewed as part of the book. He was commenting about how wonderful it is looking at the kids, white kids and black kids, both wearing Black Panther costumes, which sure would not have happened when he was a kid. And there, there was just a lot of things that bring people together in this very yay African movie. Uh, but it, it brings people together because we've got a genuine, we've got a good story, wonderful story. And, and wonderful depiction of a number of characters. And I think we can all be grateful for all, so much of what Bozeman brought and what it all led to. Thank right. you very much, Travis, I appreciate okay. it. Uh, so I'm pleased to be with Mr. Jarvis Sheffield, director of the Diversity in Speculative Fiction and Literature track at Dragon Con. Jarvis, please tell us what the life of Chadwick Bozeman Black Panther and or the Black Panther legacy in general means to you? I think it's um, a great legacy that has been left behind to, to emulate and to follow. He uh, was an actor with, um, with integrity. Mm. And uh, from, from the earliest film that I saw with him, um, 
through the last uh he, he wants to live and exemplify what um a black man should be mm -hmm. uh which is more than just looking out for yourself but looking out for your community mm -hmm. as well and then also he uh was in one of star in one of our favorite films of all time which was uh black panther mm -hmm. i've stated this before that uh, someone asked me what do you think about black panther and i told him well i've been waiting my entire life to see that movie mm -hmm. exactly. i mean it's a, a positive role model um a leader a king um they exemplified a, a strong family structure uh, integrity and tradition mm. and so those are things that um for the most part have been lacking in our community somewhat but we've been re-establishing through things like um mentorship programs mm. through rites of passage programs through holidays such as juneteenth uh kwanzaa and things of that nature to kind of develop our own uh traditions here uh based on uh african traditions and um yeah the, and so in terms of the movie it was really good not only for black people to see uh which we i mean for decades me and my friends have been waiting to see a movie of, of this particular character because we've been reading those comic books for decades right so right right starting with little kids but also for everyone else white black asian everybody uh spanish like it to see black people in a different light mm -hmm. yeah. because um you know if people only see uh a certain image and that's a lot of times that's a negative image and is broadcast around the world um that's the only interaction that uh certain people have with someone that's black so when they see someone uh run across a real person um uh, and they try to react to them right. based off of what they've seen on tv and if that was a negative representation that that might be a negative uh encounter right there so exactly. it's good to have positive representation and fair representation across the board. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, any final words? Oh, um, I just would like to uh, uh, state that, you know, like I said, uh, Chadwick was a leader. He was a, a great actor and mm. he lived as a, an example. Um, he was, doing things for the community and for actors and for just just people in general until he passed and so that uh was a great example of how a human being should handle themselves even though he kept secret that he had been battling with cancer for four years he did he never gave up doing what was right you know, um, and I want to take this moment to thank you for allowing me and my colleagues to express our gratitude and appreciation of Chadwick Boseman and his career in the Black Panther movies and legacy as such. Um, it's, uh, it's been fascinating to hear people respond to his life and to what he did with Black Panther. And um, simply thank you very much. Oh, thank you. And uh, much appreciated. All right. Shall we? Wakanda forever. And now I'm going to say a few words. Okay, so I'm Scott Jordan, as I said earlier, and um, what this, what my experience of Chadwick Boseman's passing has provoked to me is a question, you know, why does someone I've never met mean so much? And um, I think one of the issues we face when we ask that question is maybe because the important part of us is not what we would call our physical bodies, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe the important part of us is, is our story, is what we would call in my discipline, our mind. Uh, but I would argue that since those things we call minds develop out of the world we were born in, interacting with the choices we make, those minds are stories. And I've written about that philosophically, scientifically. So Stanford, when you say, you know, you were in the presence of someone and said, you've got to get home because these are just stories, I would argue, well, they're all stories because they all emerge out of live life. You emerge out of live life. 
and what you are is a narrative about how your choices have mixed in with the world that you're part of. So when, when we ask ourselves, why would someone we've never met matter? It's because what matters is the story. What matters is the mind and what they then bring to the world that we're in and how that mind could change other minds. Right? And that's how the work of culture, I would argue, honestly uh, gets done. So this thing that I call this story, Stanford said it helps us uh, get to sleep at night or we lean into it. I would argue that is identity. And when we ask ourselves, can I do that? Should I do that? Do I want that? That's us moving up against our own story. And those stories change as we change our own world and the circumstances we live in change. We don't feel like it's our story, right? But that's in a sense what it is. So when we think of our identities then as stories in this way, as things that get us into every moment and then get us through the night, I look at uh, Panther's Rage written by Don McGregor. And I, I look at the beautiful complexity he brought to Wakanda uh, in a 13 issue arc that was uninterrupted. And I, I remember the him telling us of the struggles he had to go through to make sure that they didn't try to send white superheroes to Wakanda uh, in the middle of Panther's Rage. There's a story that needed to be told that would be in the world and change how we are in the world and therefore change our stories. Then I look at what ta Coates did when he came to Black Panther and how the his arc is challenging monarchy and there's revolution in Wakanda and I thought what this is a brilliant story and the way it was told was was just beautiful and then then I look at the work of Christopher Priest on Black Panther back in the 90s and I look at I would call the subtlety which with with which he brought our attention to things like microaggressions uh, in ways that we could laugh at but at the same time it was now in our face and therefore in our world, and therefore had the potential to change our own story and change our mind. So then I look at the movie Black Panther, right? And you know, that dome scene, when they're flying over into Wakanda and then the dome goes down and you see the excitement in the character's eyes, right? You can look at that as, this is a story that you just haven't seen, right? And we're gonna open this up for you. And you get to come in and you get to see what you've been missing. You get to see what you've been missing about us. And you know what? At the very end of the movie, what do they do? They say, well, maybe you'd like to come. Maybe we'll open this up for all of you. And I just thought that's, that's the work of story. That's the work of culture for me. That's the work of being, right? Recognizing that you are a product of the context you've been in, the choices you make shape that context and shape who other people become, recognizing that that work never finishes. And this, this, this phenomenon is an invitation to look at other people's stories and ask yourself, what does it say about me? And what can we do with this collectively to, I would argue, make a world that we respect? So I, um, I think it's probably one of the most powerful long-term stories um, that I've experienced in my life. And it also brought me to being friends with all of you, which is, is a huge quality of life issue for me right now. I'll be, I'll be quite honest. I'm honored to be in your presence and absolutely thrilled to be able to share this moment um, with all of you. Um, and now to close our tribute celebration, Mr. Daniel June Kim. Thanks, Scott. So I, I said earlier that Stuff out, some of the stuff I was saying in the beginning would probably make more sense uh, later when I kind of bring it together. Um, so I'd kind of, again, playfully invite everyone to imagine themselves again as um, the prince. And, uh, and by the way, obviously, if, I mean, prince means gender neutral. It could be a princess or, or whatever you want. It's all symbolic. Um, you've just been summoned back and uh, you see your father lying on the ground dying and it's he's in the Black Panther costume and uh, it's the face of Chadwick Boseman and he says to you um, my dear daughter or son I'm going now but it's time for you to grow up and be the Black Panther so obviously in the comics right 
Black Panther, there's always a Black Panther. There must be. So if the current king or whomever dies, the next one takes their place. Um, I would, I'd like to imagine that symbolically um, that that's occurring now on some level. Um, only there isn't just one Black Panther. There are many Black Panthers. And, you know, it, again, Chadwick Boseman passing, it doesn't mean the Black Panther is dead. Uh, Black Panther is, is a symbolic abstract figure. It's forever. But in this universe, in our world, uh, the physical human manifestation, the closest we got to an actual Black Panther was Chadwick Boseman. And, um, and he, he's gone now. But it's time for us, you know, I mentioned earlier the sort of that, that world, that innocent world, innocence meant broadly speaking, very broadly speaking, it, it, that our previous world has been shattered in some way or form by this year. It might not be specifically the death of Chadwick Boseman, but many of us have both personal things going on. There are societal things going on. There are various forms of innocence, quote unquote, and ignorance being shattered. Um, so that previous world, the loss of that world, should be mourned. It's, it must be rightfully mourned. Um, so we must all kind of in this symbolic way mourn the death of our king, our father, our Black Panther. But whether we feel ready or not, and they never feel ready in the stories, right? In real life also, we never feel ready when the call to take action comes. But we have it in us, just as T'Challa, when he was a young boy, didn't feel ready to take up the calling of the Black Panther, but he had to. Um, and I think it's the end of one story, but it's time to tell ourselves another story. And whatever story we have to tell ourselves to get through this time, um, the loss of our hero, the upheaval of our society, whatever it is, tell yourself that story. Decide what fight it is that you want to fight, be it, you know, the, the profound roots of racism that has always been present in this country. You know, some people are learning about it now, but it's always been there, right? It's nothing new about it. Um, whether it's health related stuff, pandemic, cancer, incidentally, right? Um, whatever it is, personal, societal, fight it like you imagine the Black Panther would fight it. You know, the, all this royalty, Wakanda, the, the king, princes, it, to me, it's all symbolic. You know, um, we are all, potentially Black Panthers. And now that our king and our father has died, it's our turn um, to be it. So um, on that sort of mythical, symbolic level, I invite everyone to ponder um, that once you have given yourself time to mourn and process whatever form that takes, it's time for the next stage in development, which is deciding what new story you want to tell yourself, what new world you want to create and fight for it as the Black Panther would. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you very much. Oh, yes. And before we go, Wakanda, Wakanda forever. 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 Wakanda forever.
And now, for those who are interested, a bit of backstage banter. So it's still recording. So if anybody wants to say anything, go ahead. <laughs> you know, it's funny. While while you were saying you saw your wind up there, all these thoughts went through my head about stuff that I want to say, or you know, I want to like you know compliment some of, or, or piggyback off of some of the other things. And and then just as you said, so okay, you want to say anything? My mind went. You really? <laughs> Um, I, I, I do, I want to acknowledge, um, the harmony here. Uh, we are, we are definitely different people and it's been said, you know, doctors and then so, those of us who are truly, truly humble to be with you guys are going, I didn't, I didn't spend Honors all ours. a degree. Jeez, what am I doing here? But you know, the reality is we as human beings on whatever scale we are in our lives, have chosen to be together and have chosen to respect one another and to, to have these honest, open discussions. As Sanford said at a moment, uh, earlier, he says, you know, let me, if I were gonna be seriously honest, I think Sanford, I don't know that you've ever not been. <laughs> you know, much, much, much of the memories I have of you talking going all the way back to before you were a daddy, uh, you've always been polite, but quite clear about what was going on in your head, what questions you had, what things you wanted to discuss, challenges, whatever. So um, I smiled when you said that, because I'm thinking, it's always been that. You know, <laughs> so there's that. Um, Travis and, and Victor and uh, Daniel, I'm still getting to know you. And I love your house, it just keeps changing every time I see you. Know, <laughs> this bag, this guy's floating through the, the universe here. It's like Dr. Strange is always coming through some other, some mm. other realm. But, you know, again, I've spent some time with, with each of you, except for Daniel, really. And I think the kind of conversations we have are very open. It's a safe place. You know, it's, it's a place where our differences and our similarities are welcome. And it seems quite equally. Uh, I do think there's a lot of respect here. And I think that I actually look forward to these conversations. And as we were, as you were talking, I was listening and I suspect it was the reverse of that. Um, you know, images come up from my past, my childhood. And I think, God, these would have been great guys to hang out with, you know, after, after like class or something, you know. <laughs> but I also think about, you know, I, I was saying about the Black Panther and there not being any black representations at that time. There's all these white folks that were heroes to me when I was growing up, you know, and some of them I got to meet the actors in the years gone by. And sometimes that's not a good thing. No. Mm -hmm. Sometimes meeting your hero is not a good thing because you realize that was a role. Oh, this is who you really are. Oh, shit. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. uh, but then there are those moments when you, you meet someone, and again, I, I didn't meet Chadwick, but I have this feeling about him. I feel like when I met, and I could drop some names here, not, not in terms of, oh, the superstar. No, just some actors, but I met one who was a private detective on a TV series that I'd watched like crazy when I was younger, and he, he was a good guy. He was this nice person. We were actually able to just talk. And that was really cool. And I met a couple of other actors. And there was this uh, woman who went on, this actress who went on to become this sex symbol. But I met her in the early days of her career. And she was just this really sweet, nice human being who you put in front of a camera and you want to date her for the rest of your life. But uh, off camera, she's just this really sweet, wonderful person. And years later, I, I ran into her and she's still that person. Yeah. And I think that is one of the things that I hope continue because I, I see a lot of push towards the other side of that. I think good people stepping in front of a camera and becoming our heroes, becoming our celebrities, becoming people that we connect to, even if we're not trying to, somehow they become a part of our lives, our stories, as you guys were saying. I think it's, it's just an, a major blessing, a big plus, a big cherry on top. If you get to meet them and they really are mm. good people, I think that's just a wonderful reaffirming experience. And I, I wish that for a lot of the, the young people, the kids growing up, you know, um, as they move through this world. And I know that most of us are trying to make, make it a little, a little bit more sane. 
for those coming up behind us. Cause, and we, we got a battle ahead of us here, obviously. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. I, I, my, my guys are now in their mid to late 20s, and my oldest is in his early 30s. Uh, so they're already dealing with it on an adult level. But all the kids I work with, I do everything I can to try and make it a little bit saner for them and, and to encourage them to not only look for heroes out there, but also look for the heroes in themselves. And I'm, yeah, I'm you and I have talked about this before, where we've seen people have bad experiences meeting their heroes. Oh, but yeah. and and for all, all the people who say never meet your heroes, I, I it hurts me to hear that people have those because I, I had good experiences with mine, and I think about one of the things when you when you admire somebody who plays these fictional characters, especially as a kid, you might imagine someday you'll meet them, somebody will cross yeah. paths. And, and have a good encounter. And I, I remember when I was a kid, thing is like, I, re I remember imagining, like, oh, what if I met Adam West and all them? Of course, eventually I did and got to know him. But, um, it's, uh, but I, I think about what if I had not had that even thing to imagine when I was a kid? What if I got in the news that he died? Uh, mm -hmm. I think about it, it's like, that is what's hitting a bunch of kids right now. They don't have that thing to look forward to or even imagine because they know he's gone. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's such uh, a powerful statement too because I had the I had that feeling coming into comics, I wanted to be a comic book artist and it took a little while for me to fully appreciate what Jack Kirby did artistically because I came in at the age of, you know, the image explosion. So it was very yeah, different than what Jack all, was. Right? Yeah. Right? And Years later, having met Stan before he passed, I always felt like I missed out never getting an opportunity to meet Jack. Like that's, there's, there's something very cool about having met Stan, 100%. But the one that I never got to meet is the one that I long for the most. And I think mm -hmm. that's, you're absolutely right. In terms of your hero worship, the, the, the guy that I never got that chance, that's the one that I missed the absolute most. Yeah, I would I would throw in there that the relationship between a fan and a hero is is two way, in the sense that you know I've been in positions in my life where I've been fortunate enough to be able to help someone, and they say thank you, and I say well thank you, you know this is the kind of person I want to be, right? This 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 is and to be able to tell people that that happens in the world, uh, change is what they think is possible, and. It, it, creating those possibilities is is culture right um, that's that's our job and the minute we stop creating cultures as creating possibilities um we we become small and uh so i'm thrilled to be able to do this with you guys hey daniel thank you so much man Absolutely thank you everyone beautiful. uh Truly thanks for it. letting me ramble incoherently <laughs> no, 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 no that was far from incoherent everything man. you said so what does that say about us bro Right. <laughs> that got it all uh, the way in. And you take care of yourself too. Yes, yes, yes definitely. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. All right. Talk to you guys later. You. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Okay. Bye. Guys, so forgive me. I got to run. My little one's knocking on the door. So I got to uh -huh. see what it is that she's. You haven't talked the little one to kick the door in yet, huh? Listen, uh, <laughs> I'm borrowing her office, as, as we say, because this is now her <laughs> space. So that's, oh. you know. Yeah, yeah, Landlord. yeah, <laughs> yeah. She's she's like, Dad, I got work to do. Get out, you know. So, yeah, all right, book. That's what okay, it is. there you go. <laughs> yeah. Oh man! But thank you guys so very much for uh, let me do this. This was very cathartic. So, thank you Thanks for being here. Much man. appreciate that. I'll see you guys later. Yeah. All right, catch you later.